Can't wait. To Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, we all know we are like participating in this conference because we have like all uh, a mutual interest called blockchain and blockchain uh, has many up and downs in history. But the thing is that now we are like seeing blockchain, metaverse and all uh, this all ecosystem, uh, I mean, coming into the main streams. But when we are talking about the growing of this market, uh, I mean, the more the blockchain market cap is, to, is growing, the more legal disputes or legal problems is going to happen. Uh, so basically we should have an, uh, have an answer uh, to this question that uh, what, what we are going to do with the rise of uh, legal disputes in blockchain. So basically if you are like talking about the mass to adoption, we need to ensure that every user has a safe journey in Web3. So there is a main question considering this that uh, what about like blockchain, NFTs and metaverse dispute because the blockchain is not just about uh, some protocols or codes out there. Now we are currently seeing that a lot of uh, like potential disputes may appear in metaverse. So when we talk about daily shopping, doing ordinary stuff and daily thing in metaverse, so we need to understand that we have, we are going to have like identical uh, uh, disputes as real as uh, physical words in our virtual words. So uh, disputes regarding blockchain are inevitable and parties uh, will need means for dealing with these new digital disputes. So uh, the thing is that uh, can we go to the court? For example, let's say that we are in a metaverse and suddenly we are going to have uh, a problem with someone in metaverse. Uh, there are some problems in the market currently. The, the thing is that, first of all, uh, we cannot uh, expect judges like 65 years old judge who, uh, who was graduated in 1992, for example, to understand the NFT and smart contracts. Also, uh, the thing is that uh, most of the blockchain is mainly small, I mean, micro payments. So $20, like maybe like $50. So people are from like different parts of the world. Is it, I mean, reasonable, I mean, economically to just uh, follow up cases or we need to just give up on that. Also, when it comes to arbitration, you know, it's like biased. Uh, toward to people appearance, people beliefs, and many things. And also, the thing is that we are not uh, that much regulation or legislation even uh, when it comes to Web3. So basically, there are some problems that uh, that must uh, that may might be some solution for them. Uh, we call this old solution uh, like MetaCourt. What is MetaCourt? Uh, MetaCourt is uh, Web3. Uh, phenomenon or project uh, that's like as a first legal me there is like a me legal metaverse but what's the use case of this metaverse the use case is arbitration and dispute resolution and a mediation for web3 uh, legal disputes so but uh, uh, what benefits any, I mean, uh, is going to have, um, uh, for example, imagine you're like going to have a project called Metacord. What benefit Metacord may bring to people or society? Uh, first of all, it's about accessibility and affordability. We all know that, for example, imagine we have a users, we have a user from like New Delhi. Also, uh, we have like some users uh, from like New York. So basically, uh, imagine these people, if they want to just take care of legal disputes, so they need to uh, just travel around. So basically we call that like traditional legal system is not accessible, you know? So basically for MetaCourt or for bringing legal dispute to Metaverse, we are like bringing a new set of accessibility. So just find your gadget and uh, put the glasses on and then you may 
have access to justice or may we have access to arbitration or mediation service uh, that you might have like a problem or legal disputes on that. So also uh, the, the second things that uh, it this like, uh, let's say expert panel or uh, dispute uh, uh, panel may bring is that uh, we cannot, uh, who knows blockchain better? This is a very important question. Uh, like traditional judges or people in traditional legal systems, uh, basically they don't have understanding of F3 most of the time. So basically if you have a group of people that they want to be arbitrator or they want to do dispute resolution uh, for Web3 disputes, but if their knowledge is assessed because in MetaCourt, uh, first of all, we offer like first legal metaverse, second, we are going to build like expert panel for dispute resolution. So basically uh, is like a decide and earn. If you do dispute resolution, uh, I mean arbitration and dispute resolution for other people, you are mainly rewarded with the arbitration fee. Also the third thing is that, you know, uh, we can't talk about Web3 uh, mass adoption unless we ensure that every user has a safe journey in Web3, but how it might happen. Now, Web3 trans trans I mean, uh, transactions are subject to many agreements or many freelancing services, many service providing. So the thing is that imagine we have like an scroll payment system for Web3 that uh, the arbitration clause or principle between user is embedded in this uh, smart contract as arbitration clause. And then you have like an on-chain curated uh, mediation and arbitration. Uh, so basically if two users, for example, uh, go to a, a transaction or an agreement and one of them is not happy uh, from the quality of service and is challenging uh, that she's not, she shouldn't pay the amount uh, that they agreed because the quality is low, as now currently user cannot trust each other, but if they know that there is a pool of arbitrators and there is like a, a on chain, like a, I mean, a mediation service, then they say that, okay, these, they are like neutral and also it's like game to rebased. So basically it may ensure our uh, information, our, our rights and uh, regarding the agreement. Also, the, the fourth thing, uh, the benefit that any kind of decentralized justice or metaverse project may bring to us is about the, the privacy, you know, like uh, it's important. We believe that MetaCourt should act as first like privacy focused metaverse that want to really to just, I mean, to set some rules for arbitration that is not really demanding when it comes to the uh, data and data protection. For example, the traditional system, they ask you everything. What's your address? What's your name? What's your father's name? What's your, where do you live? What's your number? Which email you use? So basically, if there is a decentralized arbitration system for uh, for blockchain, the court of blockchain or meta court, then you just connect simply your wallet and that's all. Uh, so also, uh, it's about the covering like micro payments, you know? Basically, we believe that the traditional system is not very friendly with micro payments. You know, in MetaCourt, if even you have like a $5 dispute, the system uh, is obliged to take care of all disputes in a decentralized uh, manner. And also, uh, I mean, it's like really blockchain. Uh, you may just send one Satoshi to someone and the system is going to take care of this, apart from how small is the, uh, is the mining fee or whatever. So this all ecosystem, as we call it, like MetaCourt, has like many core values. It's like, uh, uh, is like first legal metaverse. I mean, it's time to bring metaverse to real use cases. Uh, what does it mean? It means that if we are talking about uh, delivering a value or something, you know, and uh, let's say we want to, just have a road to, uh, let's say, adoption. Uh, we need to bring like uh, real use cases to metaverse, metaverses or any Web3 project should solve real problem of people. And also considering this, uh, we 
uh, also ensure the governance part, any kind of this, uh, I mean, system for that want to act as a court of blockchain should be under the DAO governance. Also, Muhammad, tell me. Uh, so to interrupt you, but there's a question regarding, is it, uh, is this um, platform is um, uh, authorized uh, or uh, the government adopted? Because if it's kind of, you know, um, uh, a decentralized um, yes, yes. virtual co uh, yes, course. Yes. Is it is it like you know uh, for for any crypto user? I want exactly. to know how can I, how can I protect myself? So okay. going to another version uh, on Web three, which is you know like we have already the challenge with the regulation. Is it regulated? Or not? Yeah, yeah. Because very, good, very good question. Very good question. You know uh, what we call it uh, 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 when we talking about uh, generally about the regulation. Uh, for example, what happened to FTX? You know, we were witnessing a very sad story. You know, some people mm -hmm. says that the problem is about the lack of regulation, and at the same time, some people are saying that uh, it's about. Uh, I mean, we need to have like very more harsh, more harsh regulation, or uh, we need to have like uh, nothing at all. But uh, for us, we believe that uh, MetaCourt, you know, uh, as a project that is in IBM Hyperprotect Accelerator and has is like the, is uh, doing same cause as like decentralized justice should introduce like on-chain jurisdiction for Web3. How, for example, you imagine, for example, now we are like uh, building a, a smart contract, uh, escrow payment, a smart contract for Web3 freelancing platforms. What we are offering to them, how people may benefit if their, their platform, this freelancing platform, for example, users are going into agreements, they are going to use this escrow payment. What is, how is this, the, the escrow payment system is different. It has like some uh, like mediation and arbitration inside. So if the users reach to like any kind of disputes on case of quality or regarding the service, we have like pool of arbitrators that may like solve uh, the disputes. And in other slides, I mean, uh, I will show you how this whole system works based on, uh, we call it like a meta convention. You know, like how the users may uh, uh, may like enforce themselves to uh, to like let's say arbitration or mediation in Web three, and basically it's time that we need to have like on, on chain enforcement. What does it mean? On chain enforcement is like a score payment tool with on chain curated mediation and arbitration. So if the users uh, had like disputes, so basically there are other Web three uh, users that are going to do dispute resolution for them. Also, they may benefit from the fee uh, that they are receiving, like it's like decide and air. So, and it's, these are all happening like in a ecosystem, you know, it's not about, uh, is uh, even now, if you rent some place in real world, in physical world, sometimes, you and the and the people at the person you who for who you are getting the office you uh, you uh, you agree on referring your disputes any future disputes to arbitration and what we are doing is asking web3 users to just choose uh, the, the the decentralized means for their uh, dispute resolution methods and uh, this coming. tell tell me mm -hmm. Another, another comment received about this, you know, like if I'm a user, crypto user, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to use Metacore, for example, if they kind of, you know, tips and tricks can give them with how to secure them, themselves, especially after what happened with uh, FTX and Oli or many. Yeah, the um, thing, uh, the, the very good question. But the thing is that if the users, you know, if they don't want even to, to use Metacore, they... Uh, they need to agree on something. If they need to choose some a certain uh, countries' uh, rules or legislation as a governing law to their agreements, or simply saying put nothing out there, and then they need to reach to their like jurisdiction courts, or a third version that we are like working on that is to choose like a, a decentralized community of 
uh, let's say expert that are willing to do like dispute resolution for these parts of like uh, for day like say a transaction or agreements but at the end of the day you know like these uh, people need to have some uh, consent to bring the case or uh, i mean you can't just do that after the incident but uh, one thing that i want really to stress on that is uh, how you know like uh, what is like the vision and impact behind you know uh, we uh, like uh, building an on-chain jurisdiction is what we call it like meta convention uh, uh, and it's like uh, uh, mixing a, a, a learn to earn and a decide to earn because like we have like uh, education we are educating the panel expert panel we are educating people who are like participating and how does it work this system we call it like uh, people may trust it but how people may trust that we call it like game theory based system for example uh, people like ordinary people they first come and said that we want to do dispute resolution for other web3 let's say uh, disputes let's say so they we have like a decentralized test like knowledge assessment test then uh, if they if they want to do that we they need to stake the the, the, the token of the network why because uh, the thing is that we call it like game theory based but what does what does it mean is that the people some people would be applicants then we do like knowledge assessment and then we have like some uh, some of them will be fail but the thing is that when we call it like game theory based it means that the jurors or the uh, the arbitrators need to stake the court token and if they are let's say uh, the, if they are like winner or they make like correct decision they are rewarded with the uh, some tokens but if like you are minority you are not going to get a, a portion of your tokens back this is how like general system of uh, game theory based arbitration work imagine like Rose and John signed the local design agreement with escrow. Then they have like a dispute. So we will get like, uh, they will go to relevant court and then we will have some algorithmic uh, selection of like jurors. And you see some jurors, uh, uh, like most jurors says that the, 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 the Rose is the right person and the John uh, is like minority. So the Rose wins and John face like, Appeal for the arbitration and also the jurors who is like majority they receive like uh, some kind of like arbitration fee uh, in the form of the uh, the token of the network but all these issues is uh, happening in a market that we call it like uh, we have like some competitors even we have some projects now uh, let's say Claros for example is an Ethereum based dispute another, resolution I'm sorry to interrupt you I'm sorry but another like um, a comment we got now related to how we can dispute Meta MetaCourt because you know it might happen. I have a problem with you. How can I dispute you? How can I have it uh, Based yeah, on what yeah, you mentioned, yeah, I got the point. Uh, generally, we have like two set of uh, uh, dispute resolution. First of all, uh, it's when like the uh, the juror decide that, uh, for example, A or B, that they decide to bring the case to Meta Court. So people, when they choose the arbitration, they want termination of dispute. So basically we can't have like an endless, an end-to-end -end, like dispute and challenging. So basically we have like a pre-millennial round, it's like anonymity, anonymity uh, based like arbitration, uh, the, uh, the arbitrator are anonymous. They just need to stake some amount of money to be drawn as juror. And if they are, uh, if they are like, uh, if they become became like juror, then they are like, uh, they need to uh, check the case, uh, check the documents, all everything about the document, and then they need to vote in. And after vote collection, if they are majority, uh, so uh, one party will win, but the other party will uh, may have like an appeal from. Like a rare, like an expert panel, but uh, at the end of the day, you need to pay this amount. And we have like two, like a uh, uh, where like uh, prelim preliminary and also like appeal process. But uh, it's at the end. Uh, this, this is not more than this. So basically, that's when the dispute ends. Uh, currently, what we are like uh, adding as a like value to the uh, to the market is bringing like metaverse and a virtual experience to the arbitration. 
so we have like a, a virtual uh, environment, uh, const I mean, consisting of uh, land plots, the, so law firms, legal entities, law schools, uh, uh, virtual, may have like virtual experience, may have their digital twins out there. And if I want uh, to just uh, dive into realm of virtual metacord, we've already finished the 3D design of all project. Uh, this is the map of project. Uh, you may see some Middle Eastern uh, design patterns out there. So basically uh, the project is based in Istanbul. We are happy that we've been uh, accepted for IBM, Hyperprotect Accelerator Program. It's a two-year equity-free program. Uh, so basically we are first-hand experience in that case. And these are some land plots in the uh, immersive environment of the Metacourt that you may see. And this is one of the virtual courts that we are like testing nowadays. And also consisting, uh, there are like some, these are like uh, tokenomics of uh, like NFTs, how many land, how many plots, how many units. It's out there, it's like general map of the project. And there are some milestones that, uh, uh, we had like in uh, 15th of November, uh, we had some kind of uh, private testnet launch to check the product demo. And uh, it was quite good that uh, we got like a positive feedback. Uh, from 27th of November to 15th of December, we are going to have a testnet launch in MetaCourt page. Uh, we will publish a whitelist information. Uh, so if you are a Web3 project, uh, a Web3 enthusiast, that want to contribute in future of uh, justice or building future of justice for Web3, we will be more than happy uh, to have you on board in our testnet. Uh, test uh, also, we have like a team, like other project is a very multidisciplinary team consisting of women's and men's and tech and law. And at the end of the day, you may see some like documents uh, in website of the project. Uh, the MetaCourt is an impact-driven project. For us, maybe it was more easier to uh, kind of concentrate in the uh, entertainment industry, but we wanted really to bring a real use case to Metaverse rather than gaming or, I mean, gaming, because we believe road to mass adoption is bringing Metaverse to real use cases that solve real problems of uh, people's. And this is how we believe that uh, a legal metaverse with main utility of uh, like curated, uh, I mean, arbitration and mediation may ensure a uh, safe journey for uh, users. And uh, at, at the end of the day, era, I mean, Rome was not built over the night. So we are working with like uh, IBM, some other partners, Village Capital, a venture fund. And also we are going to be listed in many launchpad, a series of launchpad soon from 24th of November. And we will, uh, we will welcome any contribution in case of, uh, I mean, participation in testnet or being an ambassador or even supporter or investor. That was all. So if uh, there is any other question, I will, uh, be glad to answer them.